All right, welcome back to 2, 5, um, those piecewise functions. So let's graph a couple more. Um, so this one has three pieces. So I'm going to graph all three and then kind of erase the pieces I don't want. So the first piece tells us that the graph is equal to negative 3 when x is less than 3. So negative 3 just makes one of those horizontal lines again. So at negative 3, we get a horizontal line. And then if you're feeling ready to start erasing pieces, it's from negative 3 and it's only less than. And so that means negative 3 is not included, so we'll do an open circle and shade to the left. All right, next one, let's see. Um, in between negative 3 and 3, we get x. So x is a line, right? It could be the same as 1x. It means we start at 0, 0, and we go, it's that nice line just right through the middle, right? Up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. And draw the whole line. Try to make it as straight as possible. And then it's only in between three, negative 3 and 3. So it would be negative 3 is included because of the or equal sign. 3 is included because of the or equal sign. And then we're going to include in between. And then you can erase the rest. So even though it had an open circle at the blue, it ends up being a closed circle because they meet at the same spot. And our final line is x, y equals 3 when x is bigger than 3. So that's a horizontal line. which is right here, and it starts at 3. It's an open circle, but we look, looks like we've already filled that spot, and it's only to the right because it's bigger. And that's our weird piecewise function. And then it actually isn't discontinuous at the negative 3 and 3, um, so it might be discontinuous at these points where it switches. Um, but since they meet at the same point, it's not discontinuous, right? We could technically draw this without picking up our pencil. So this one has no discontinuities. But we didn't really know that until we drew the graph. So this would be considered a continuous graph. So even though it's piecewise, sometimes the pieces will um, meet up at the same spot and make a connected piece. All right, let's try another graph. Um, so let's check out this function. It doesn't really look piecewise, um, but we'll see something weird happens here. So f of x equals x squared minus 1 over x plus 1. I really don't know how to graph this complicated rational function, so I'm going to factor and see what happens. So the top would be x plus 1, x minus 1, and the bottom would be x plus 1. And then before we do any canceling, let's think about domain. What is domain here? So we learned denominators can't be 0, so x plus 1 can't be 0, meaning x can't be negative 1. That's our domain. So even if things cancel out, because this is our original function, x cannot be negative 1. So we need to make sure we um, keep track of that. So then we're going to go ahead and cancel, and we get f of x equals x minus 1, but there is a rule x can't equal negative 1 because of the original function. So it is almost going to be a line, but x cannot be negative 1. Again, and that has to do with what we started with. So even though traditionally negative 1 is fine in this function, um, because the original function had a denominator, we cannot be equal to negative 1. So we're going to graph a line, and we're just going to get rid of the negative one point. All right, so let's see. What does this look like? We start at 0, negative 1, because it's linear. And then slope is 1. So 
up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, down one, over one, down one, over one. Anyone know why I put an open circle in that second one? Because that's where x equals negative one. So it's gonna look like a line just with an open circle at negative one. And again, that has to do with the domain. Because even though we're graphing x minus one, it started as x squared minus one over x plus one, and so we really have to consider the original function. We're graphing really the original function, we just simplified it to make it easier to graph. All right, let's try one more in this video, and then we'll take a break. So now we wanna force this new function to be continuous at x equals two which is where the piecewise changes. So we have kx plus two when x is less than two, and we have x squared plus one um, when x is greater than or equal to two. So maybe from the previous examples, we realized that they need to meet at the same point. The pieces need to meet at the same point to make them continuous versus this one met at different points, so it wasn't continuous. So basically what we're going to do is we want, when we plug in 2, and I chose 2 because that's where the piece changes, we want the left piece and the right piece to be the same. So we don't know what k is, um, but when I plug in 2, I want k times 2 plus 2. That's my left side. We need it to be the same as the right side, which is 2 squared plus 1. And so by having the same value, that means the graph is going to touch rather than the pieces being separate pieces. So we get 2k plus 2 equals 4 plus 1, or 2k plus 2 equals 5. Subtract 2k equals 3, and divide by 2. So k equals 3 halves. And let's actually check our work with Desmos. So let's see, 3 halves x, because k is 3 halves, plus 2. So it's going to draw the whole line, that's okay. And then x squared plus 1. And then let's see, it's at 2. Do they meet at the same spot? Yeah. So that means when we do the pieces, so let's see, I don't know if you can do pieces on the this version. Yeah. But when you do the pieces, We have the quadratic, the blue one on the right side, and we have the line on the left side. That's a quadratic. And they meet at the same spot, so that's what makes it continuous. Versus if it jumped, right, it's not continuous. So that's why we're making them the same, so they meet at the same spot. Cool, let me know if you have any questions.